हेलो एवरीवन वेरी गुड इवनिंग आई वेलकम यू ऑल एट इंडिया मोस्ट कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव प्रिपरेशन प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर ऑल टेक्निकल एग्जाम्स प्रिपरेशन एग्जाम्स दैट इज बाइजूज एग्जाम प्रैप सो गाइज आई एम एक्सट्रीमली सॉरी फॉर डिले देर वॉज समेक्निकल इशू नाउ इट इज बिन रिजोल्व सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू सो दिस इज अबाउट माई सेल्फ माई नेम इज विशाल रावतिया आई हैव टेन प्लस इयर्स ऑफ टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस एंड दिस आर माई क्रेडेंशियल्स ओके सो गाइज दिज इन अनाउंसमेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू दैट Baiju's exam prep is going to conduct a national scholarship test on 13th of June that is on Sunday at 12 pm so do participate in this test you may avail up to 90% of off on all our programs so guys uh, that's an important news if you are serious about gate exam then keep participating in such test okay so let's start with the very first question so give me the answer for the first question give me the answer for the first question the subset of a super key is a candidate key under what condition so we say that every candidate key is a super key but every super key need not be a candidate key when do we say that sub, uh, the subset of a super key is a candidate key under what condition the subset of a super key is a candidate key under what condition so subset of a super key so let's try to understand it is saying subset of a super key is a candidate key so when i say subset so what type of subset you are talking about are you saying proper subset or um, a normal subset so the idea is uh, the subset of a super key is a candidate key so Let's assume that if you are saying x, y, z, then what are the different subsets? So uh, x, y, z is also a subset of itself. X, y, z is also a subset of itself. If you start considering as x, y, z also in this definition, so that's the idea. What's the trick in the question? The subset of a super key is a candidate key. So the idea is uh, at least one subset of a super key is always a candidate key. at least one subset of a super key is always a candidate key so the uh, super key itself may be a candidate key so the idea is under what condition the subset of a super key will be a candidate key so what subset a proper subset what subset a proper subset so it is saying no proper subset is a super key if no proper subset of a super key if no proper subset of a super key is a candidate key if no proper subset of a super key is a super key if no proper subset of a super key is a super key then what is super key no proper subset of a super key is a super key what does it say no proper subset of a super key is a super key means this super key is minimal this super key is minimal yes or no so the subset of a super key is a candidate key under what condition no proper subset is a super key right so if no proper subset of a super key is a super key means is not a key attribute then your super key will be minimal then your super key will be minimal and in that case your super key will be a candidate key right so i guess there is the subset is wrong the super key is a candidate key under what condition what the idea the super key is a candidate key under what condition the super key is going to be a candidate key when super key is minimal when do we say super key is minimal when no proper subset of super key is a super key or candidate key right so this is correct but let's look at the other options all subsets are, are super key if all subsets of a super key are super key then what does it mean if all subsets of a super key are super key that it means every attribute of the relation is a candidate key and if a and b both are uh, candidate key then ab together cannot be the candidate key it will just be a super key so see the idea is super key is a key attribute that's not a problem but what you need to understand is the super key is a candidate key under what condition 
सुपर की इज अ कैंडिडेट की व्हेन इट इज मिनिमल मिनिमल मींस नो एट्रीब्यूट कैन बी रिमूव फ्रॉम दैट सो नो प्रॉपर सबसेट इज अ सुपर की इफ नो सबसेट ऑफ अ सुपर की इज अ सुपर की देन वी कैन से सुपर की इज मिनिमल सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ए इफ ऑल सबसेट्स आर सुपर की देन सुपर की विल जस्ट बी अ सुपर की इट विल नॉट बी अ कैंडिडेट की एट लीस्ट वन सबसेट इज अ सुपर की is it necessary that at least one subset is a super key see for every super key for every super key at least one subset will always be a super key at least one subset so the idea is the super key itself is a subset of itself so if i say x y z then x y z itself is a subset of it so in that case this subset will be a super key because x y z was a super key so the subset x y z again will be a super key It did not. It did not say proper subset. So this will also be true. So the idea is this will always be true with respect to super key, but this is not the case for a super key to be candidate key, right? So this is not right. This is also not right. Each subset is a super key. So it's like said, all subsets are super key, or each subset is a super key is the same thing. All subsets are super key, or each subset is a super key will represent the same thing. So the correct answer is option A. So it's basically. uh an old nilit question but was asked in the same format let's move to the next question assume a relation x m n o p q that has the following functional dependency so you have a relation and you have two functional dependencies now it is asking for the total number of super keys so in dbms the most easy question that can be asked in the nilit and this row is row will be related to super key concept what will be the answer please kushal i am me hil nahi raha hu wo writing karte time wo laptop actually mai isko udhar rakh leta hu i'll make some arrangement this table is don't worry there will not be any problem of this type now okay the total number of super keys of x would be what how do we calculate first of all we need to calculate all the candidate keys of a relation in order to find the super key so let's see mm, the total number of attributes are m n o p q so tell me is m n o is a candidate key so first of all we need to check the closure of m n o the closure of m n o will consist of all the attributes that is m n o p q therefore it is a super key but is it is it a candidate key what will be m closer m closer will be m only n closer will be n only o closer will be o only you can have another closer m n closer will be m n only m o closer will be m o only and n o closer will be n o only so no proper so just like the previous concept this is a super key because it can derive all the attributes this is a super key because this can derive all the attributes but no proper subset of this super key is a super key it it cannot derive all attributes and also cannot derive all, all attributes o also cannot derive all attributes m and together cannot derive all attributes mo together cannot derive all attributes and no together also cannot derive all the attributes therefore none of the proper subset of this set are super key therefore this is a candidate key okay if this is a candidate key then look, let's look at this another fd which is which is p implies mn so if you have the value of p then you can eventually derive mn so let's look at the closure of p and o so what is po closure because of p you can derive p by p you can also derive mn because of o you can derive o and m and o together will be able to derive q so po also can derive all the attributes po also can derive all the attributes in this case p closer will be p m n only and o closer will be o only therefore this is also a candidate key right now you can replace p by m n o but you will get m n o only nothing new so there are two candidate keys one is m n o another is p o clear hai itna sabko there are two candidate keys one is m n o for this relation another is p 
क्लियर नाउ आई एम आस्किंग फॉर द टोटल नंबर ऑफ सुपर कीज सो लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ वी हैव अ रिलेशन विथ एन एट्रीब्यूट्स ए वन ए टू ए थ्री ए फोर एक्सेट्रा देन हाउ डू वी कैलकुलेट दैट इफ देर इज A candidate key which consists of three attributes a1, a2, a3, and there is another candidate key which consists of only two attribute a1 and a4. So let's try to understand this. This is the scenario. We have five attributes. We have five attributes, and among those five attributes, three attributes m and n o. So we can say this is m, this is n. and this is o m n and o are creating a candidate key this is again a3 only nothing new and this is a4 so this a4 can be considered as p that is o and p that is o so this is your o so o and p together are creating another candidate key now the idea is how many total number of super keys are possible if there are five attributes can any one of you give the answer Correct, Harsh. Correct. Very good. Right. So, how to solve such problem? So, let's see. These are the three attributes in a super key. These three attributes must be present. So, if M, N, and O are present, then with respect to this, the leftover attributes are five minus three. If we leave this three, then we are left with two only. So, two raised power five minus two. Two raised power mm, five minus three. Sorry. Two raised power. 5 minus 3 that is 2 raised power 2 that is 4 super keys are possible with respect to mno 4 super keys are possible with respect to mno how many super keys are possible with respect to o and p so the super keys which are possible with respect to o and um, p will be 2 raised power 5 attributes were there in the relation and out of them 2 are being used therefore 2 raised power Three that is eight super keys are possible with P and O. Now, so total there are eight plus four. Total there are eight per eight plus four. So twelve uh, super keys are possible. No, 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 no. Why? Because one super key M N O M N O P Q has been considered with respect to this as well as it has been considered with respect to this. So this M N O P Q have been considered twice. Similarly, what else? M N O P is a super key which has been considered in this set as well as has been considered in this set, right? So these are the two keys which has been considered twice when we are calculating four plus eight. Eight. Therefore, this two must be subtracted. So overall, there are twelve. Keys, but out of them, this two, which has been repeated twice in both the sets, should be subtracted, and over the overall number of super keys will be ten. Clear? Is this clear to everyone? So this is a very important concept. So you guys need to understand that if there is a relation, so what you need to see if there is a relation R with n attributes, and there is any candidate key. With let's assume three attributes a one, a two, a three is one candidate key, and another candidate key with another uh, other combinations a x, a y, a z, x y z may be some of this a one, a two, a three also. Then how many super keys are possible that can be done using this that can be calculated using this concept of Venn diagram that this three must be present. In all the super keys with respect to M N O candidate key, and this two O and P must be present in all the super keys with respect to O P. So if M N are common, then they will be repeated uh, counted twice. Therefore, they should be subtracted from at least one. So how many common are there? So in this, this four elements. So basically, how many common are there? Two raised power five minus four because these are the four elements. Two raised power five minus four. Will be two raised power one. That is two keys are common. So when you subtract this common keys, you will be left with ten. Done. Let's move to the next question. What does it say? 
विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट आर ट्रू अबाउट एन एस क्यू एल क्वेरी विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट आर ट्रू अबाउट एन एस क्यू एल क्वेरी सो दिस इज द नॉलेज ऑफ एस क्यू एल एन एस क्यू एल क्वेरी कैन कंटेन अविंग क्लॉज इवन इफ इट डज नॉट इट डज नॉट हैव अ ग्रुप बाय क्लॉज सो टेल मी विदर पी इज ट्रू और फॉल्स सो टेल मी इंडिविजुअली whether p is true or false can we have having clause in an sql query which is not having a group by clause so see we can have having clause without group by clause but if we use having clause without group by clause then having clause will be applied on each tuple so in general if group by clause is present then having clause will be applied on each group but if group by clause is not present then having clause can will be applied on each tuple so the statement is that can we have having clause even if it does not have a group by clause yes we can have yes we can have so this statement is true what about second statement yeah uh what did you say harsh you are saying d i am saying statement p is true an sql query can contain having clause even if it does not have a group by clause it can contain having clause okay next is so what will be the scenario if you are having clause if you are having having clause without group by clause then this having clause will work on each tuple that's the only thing an sql query can contain a having class clause only if it has a group by clause so if a statement p is true then q must be false if p is true then q must be false both of them are contradictory all attributes used in a group by clause must appear in the select clause no not necessary not necessary all attributes is it not so that all the attributes which are present in the group by clause should also be present in the select clause so this statement is false not all attributes used in the in used by clause need to appear it's not necessary need not so may or may not so it's not necessary therefore the statement s is eventually true so two statements which are true are p and s two statements which are true are p and s nallam and hash what the idea all attributes used in group by clause must be appearing in the select clause is it necessary okay so let's move to the next question which of the following concurrency control protocol ensure both conflict serializability and freedom from deadlock does 2pl ensure serializability yes that is known to everyone that 2pl ensures serializability so if you talk about 2pl serializability ensure but does 2pl ensure freedom from deadlock no why do we discuss time stamp ordering protocol because 2pl may suffer from deadlock 2pl may cause irrecoverability and 2pl may cause may suffer from starvation so serializability is okay but freedom from deadlock is not okay so what do i mean that two transactions may be stuck in a particular situation forever right so this is not possible but in time stamp ordering protocol in time stamp ordering protocol time stamp ordering protocol will ensure serializability and there is no problem of deadlock because in time stamp ordering protocol we have the concept of rollback in time stamp ordering protocol we have the concept of rollback therefore freedom from deadlock right 
will have freedom from deadlock. So the correct answer in this, the, the protocol which will ensure both serializability and freedom from deadlock will be second only. Nalam, what's the confusion? Ask me, what is the confusion? What doubt uh, you are having in your mind? Next, which of the following set of dependencies? So, there are some dependencies given. Which of the following set of dependencies is suitable for making this relation R, A, B, C, D to be in 3NF but not in BCNF? Give me the answer. For what will be the answer for this? Nalam, what doubt you are having, you can tell me. Give me the answer. Have one minute time and give me the answer. Analyze all the dependencies. Harsh is saying B. Uh, we'll check. I don't know the answer at this point of time. All the FDs. I mean, these are just the numbers. I'll have to mug the answer if I need to provide you the result at that instant itself. So, let's see. If these are the FDs, then AB implies CD. Therefore, AB and A closer is what? So let's look at this. A closer here is what? A to C. A closer will be AC only. What will be B closer? Sir, B closer will be B only. Right? So neither A alone can determine all the attributes nor B alone can determine. Therefore, this AB is actually a candidate key. And if AB is a candidate key, so here you need to realize if AB is a candidate key, then B can be determined by D. Therefore, uh, AB. So, AD will also be a candidate key. AD will also be a candidate key. So, candidate key will be AD and AB. Anything else? Anything else? No. So, these are the only two candidate keys. Now, this is in BCNF. A and these are non-prime attributes. So, this is 1NF. So, the moment you see A implies C, it is in 1NF. The moment you see A implies C, it is in 1NF. Therefore, forget about this. Here, AB to CD, AB to CD, therefore A closer is A only, B closer is B only, therefore this is actually your candidate key. This is your candidate key. Uh, whosoever give the answer, okay, okay, this is for previous one, fine. So, AB implies CD, AB is our candidate key, then here, can we replace, this is actually a splitting rule, you can write it C implies D as well as C implies A. Then whatever you can uh, achieve using A can also be derived using C. So if AB is a candidate key, then let's check for CB. What is C closer? So C closer is CDA. C closer is CDA, but it does not determine B, therefore B must be included and B closer is B only. So none of the proper subset of this two is uh, this is a candidate key, therefore this is a candidate key, right? So two candidate keys, CB is a candidate key and AB is a candidate key. So again, what is the normal form of this second one? What is the normal form? So this is in BCNF, that's fine. This is in BCNF, but this is what a proper subset of a candidate key. And this D, when you look at this, C implies D. When you look at this, C implies D, then this is a non-prime attribute, therefore it is in 1NF. It is in 1NF. What about option C? Sir, A implies BCD. So, A is our candidate key. A is our candidate key. Now, B implies CD. No, sir. C implies G. So, there is only one candidate key. There is only one candidate key that is A. Right? So, what is the normal form here? Sir, this A implies BCD is in BCNF because A is the super key. Let me write. This is in BCNF. For B implies, these are non-prime attribute, this is also a non-prime attribute. So, non-prime attribute determining non-prime attribute. This is what? So, it is not a partial dependency, but it is a transitive dependency. So, it is in 2NF, but not in 3NF. So, it is in 2NF, but not in 3NF. There is also 2NF, but not in 3NF. 
clear so again okay, this is also not correct what about option d sir a b implies c d a closer is a only b closer is b only therefore that this is a candidate key this is a candidate key so a b is a candidate key b can be replaced by d therefore a d and a d closer is what a closer is a d closer is d b therefore a d is also a candidate key now a can be replaced by c therefore c b is also a candidate key c closer is c a c closer is c a and b closer is b apart from that one more candidate key will be c d clear just a minute a b is a candidate key a can be replaced by c b right so c to a and a b will give you d right so these are all the candidate keys a b a d c b and c d so here you can actually see all attributes are from prime attributes all are prime attributes right so the first one is in bcnf this is in bcnf this is in 3nf this is also in 3nf so what is the normal form of the relation normal form of the relation is 3nf but it is not in bcnf because there are two fds there are two fds which are not in bcnf the correct correct answer for this that the fd set which ensures that this relation r is in 3nf but not in bcnf is option d clear uh nallam you didn't let me know about your doubt okay what about this question number 6 what is the answer identify the true statement from the given statements it says lossless and dependency preserving decomposition into 3nf is always possible yes or no so uh, in nilet or isro if they ask a question related to dependency preserving and lossless so that will be only related to such properties that what is allowed at what level so what's the idea the most adequate form of relational database minimum system is considered 3nf because you can always decompose a relation up to 3nf while ensuring lossless join as well as dependency preservation therefore you can always decompose a relation into 3nf such that it is lossless as well as dependency preserving therefore this statement 1 is true right now any relation with two attributes in bcnf there is also true but another thing is what you need to learn from here can we so let's see tell me lossless and dependency preserving decomposition into bcnf if i ask you whether lossless and dependency preserving decomposition into bcnf is always possible so this new statement if i call it a third statement so whether it will be true or false tell me whether it will be true or false lossless and dependency preserving decomposition into bcnf is always possible no this statement will be false but if we only say if i write a fourth statement lossless decomposition lossless decomposition into 3nf or into bcnf is always possible true or false so this statement will, will also be true so what you need to remember is this statement is true so you can always decompose a relation up to bcnf while ensuring lossless join you can always decompose a relation up to 3nf while ensuring dp dependency preservation but right. 
यू कैन नॉट इंश्योर बोथ लॉसलेस एज वेल एज डिपेंडेंसी प्रिजर्वेशन अप टू बीसीएनएफ सो इन बीसीएनएफ यू विल ऑलवेज बी एबल टू प्रिजर्व दी लॉसलेस ज्वाइंट प्रॉपर्टी बट यू मे लूज दिस डिपेंडेंसी प्रिजर्विंग प्रॉपर्टी बाय ट्राइंग टू डीकम्पोज अ रिलेशन इन टू बीसीएनएफ right so that's the overall thing which i wanted to explain from this question so i repeated this so statement 1 is true statement 2 is true that's a different thing but if it is about bcnf then you can have lossless joint de decomposition up to bcnf but you may or may not have a dependency preserving decomposition into bcnf up to 3nf everything is possible up to 3nf everything is possible therefore we call it most adequate normal form This is the most adequate normal form because everything can be preserved up to three n f, right? So the correct answer from here is both one and two. So identify the true statement. Both of them are true. Okay. One question is related to this. How do we check conflict serializability? How do we check conflict serializability for a relation? how do we check conflict serializability for a relation so to check whether the relation uh, uh, whether a schedule not a relation how do we check conflict serializability for a schedule we were just discussing relation relation in the previous question so everything is related to relation only so how do we check conflict serializability so we check precedence graph or we say actually a cyclic precedence graph if your precedence graph is acyclic then conflict serializable schedule acyclic precedence graph then conflict serializable schedule if you say not or let's say assume cyclic precedence graph if you say cyclic precedence graph then does it mean not conflict serializable schedule yes cyclic precedence graph means not conflict serializable schedule now what else sir if the schedule is conflict serializable schedule then it means it is serializable it means it is serializable if it is not conflict serializable then it may or may not be serializable i hope you all know this but this is for students who are appearing the in appearing in the neelit and isro so this thing may be new for them right so you just need to construct this schedule so let's see there are three transitions t1 t2 and t3 so r1 so it will conflict with the right operation of t2 and t3 so do we have right operation in t2 yes do we have we have right operation in t2 therefore t1 must appear before t2 now this is right of 2 so it will conflict with read operation on uh, data item x by transition t2 so it will get conflict because of right operation by transition t1 or t3 so do we have any right operation by t1 or t3 yes it is a right operation by t1 therefore t2 must appear before t1 now the moment you see a cycle what did i say cyclic therefore not conflict serializable schedule so forget about this now this is r2 so there is a read operation by transition t2 so it will check whether any right operation by transition t1 or t3 is performed or not so it will check let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go here so it is w1 so it will eventually say that for this if i draw t1 t2 and t3 then this t2 must appear before t1 t2 must appear before t1 let's next one is tan read operation of transition t1 now you need to see is there any right operation of t2 and t3 yes there is a right operation of t2 just after this therefore there is a precedence between t1 and t2 that t1 should ex execute before t2 again a cycle therefore not a complex serializable schedule this two are not what about transition t3 so this read 3 so it will worry about the right operation by transition t2 as well as by transition t1 so let's see t1 t2 t3 so it says right operation by uh, 
you know, T1 or T2, yes, T2. So it will say T3 should execute before T2 as well as T2 should execute, T3 should execute before T1. Fine. Next is read operation by transition T2. So this read, this write. So same, the operation of read and write, read and write operation of same transaction does not cause any trouble. So read two and write of transition two are okay. So this is the read of two and this is the write of one. So this will create a problem. Read appears before write. Therefore, your transition T2 should execute before T1. Right. Next is read by transition one of data item X. Next is write of data item X by transition T2. So this is read of T1 is occurring before the write of T2. Therefore, T1 should execute before T2. Though again, there is a cycle. Again, there is a cycle. Therefore, not conflict serializable schedule. So this third one is also not conflict serializable schedule. What about fourth one? So obviously, three are wrong. So it has to be. But let's draw the precedence graph. This is your T1. This is T2. This T3. So T2, uh, read operation of transition T2, write by T1 or T3, write by here. So here, T2 should execute before T1. That's fine. What is next? Write operation. So write will be in conflict with read as well as in write. So write. So write and this is read of the same data item by another transition. So write of transition T2 appears before the read of transition T3. Therefore, T2 should execute before T3. T2 should execute before T3. What else? This R1. So write of T2 execute, uh, appears before read of T1. Therefore, T2 should execute before T1. But this precedence is already there. So we don't need to worry about this. We don't need to worry about this. Now this is right and this is right. So again, the right of T2 should appear before right of T1. So that's also fine. Now let's look at the third one. This is read of three. It will have a problem only with the right operation. So the right operation after this read is by transition T1. So T3 should execute before T1. T3 should execute before T1. So this will be the direction. T3 should execute before T1. Now, any other right? No. So this right read operation of transition T1, this is also by transition T1, therefore no conflict because of this. So let's check. Is this graph acyclic? So this, this, then the arrow direction is different. Different, different. So it is acyclic. So because it is acyclic, therefore conflict serializable schedule and this option D is the correct answer. Clear? So option D is the correct answer. So guys, these are the type of questions which will be asked in the NEELIT or ISRO. Now, uh, I am not extending this series further or this uh, particular session further because I have already taken four sessions in which I have discussed the previous year questions of database management system. So you can actually see the series in which I have discussed previous year questions of NEELIT and ISRO. Uh, one in one session I have covered normal forms in one session I have covered relational algebra in one session I have covered SQL in one session I have covered transactions and concurrency control so from there you will not only get the questions but you will also uh, get to know the concept related to this topic so for DBMS I will not discuss too many questions because that's not important you also need to learn some concept so you can watch those videos those are available on this YouTube channel itself. So these are only four or five days back. I have taken those uh, sessions uh, in which we have discussed previous year questions of database management system. So you can have a look on that and this will be the last question of this particular session. Apart from that, uh, I am conducting the series of discrete mathematics in which I am discussing the concepts of discrete mathematics which are related to NEELIT and ISRO. So these classes are happening on the Baiju uh, exam prep app. So you guys can simply uh, register on uh, register uh, on the app and can attain this session free of cost because this classes are free live classes on the application. So tomorrow I'm going to discuss the concept of covering and matching. You can also 
view the past classes if you want to learn the concept of discrete mathematics so that will be all for this particular session thank you very much if you like this session then hit the like button if you are new to the channel then subscribe for the subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get the notification about our upcoming videos that will be all thank you very much see you in the next session tata bye bye